Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Edward Francis, the founder and chairman of the Thousand Oaks Philharmonic, and I want to welcome you to our Opus 33 concert. One of my other uh, jobs here is to tell you a little bit about the pieces that we're going to hear today. But we have a world premiere that's going on this weekend, and it was written by the president of the Thousand Oaks Philharmonic, uh, Michael Williams. And I thought it would be best for him to come out and give us a brief synopsis of his piece. So let me introduce Michael Williams. Thank you, Edward. Welcome, everyone. And I'm thrilled about this performance. Uh, Thank you for coming, and uh, it's not often we get to hear the first uh, vibrations in the air of a, of a new piece of uh, classical music, so I hope you um, enjoy it very much. I am thrilled at the performance that's going on, and uh, I think you will be too. Let me just share with you a little bit about the piece. Um, there's uh, three major themes, if you will, that are strung together into a medley, and that's uh, sort of the tradition of the overture. Uh, the first theme is called the Ghost Galleon, and it's supposed to depict a kind of a spectral uh, sailing ship that comes through the fog and you, is populated by ghost pirates. And then the second uh, theme is called, I just simply call it Aria. It's about sailing. So you can imagine a tall sailing ship just, you know, on a glorious sunny day with the wind blowing through your hair and a very peaceful, serene moment. And the third theme is called Oceanic Whirlpool. And it's supposed to depict the uh, sort of phenomenon of this sort of combination of a tornado and an earthquake under the ocean, and it creates a deep whirlpool that's sort of like a black hole in the ocean. So I hope you enjoy this piece as much as I'm enjoying the orchestra's performance. Thank you.
In addition to our Opus concerts, the Thousand Oaks Philharmonic also has several other things. We have an Appassionata pre-college pre uh, conservatory training program, and within that we have master classes for uh, piano and also master classes for violin. We had our second violin master class yesterday at our recital hall at the Paseo Marketplace in a Westlake Village, which was a big success. We also have a gold recital series in which we present students around the county in various recitals. We've done eight of those this year. Additionally, some of our uh, recent uh, students who've played, who are graduating, um, Michael Aspinwall just accepted a full scholarship at UCLA as a double piano and composition major. Uh, Sam Kinsey and Vivian Rotenstein accepted full scholarships at the USC uh, U University of Southern California. Um, and Evan DeLong, Drew Doms, and Cameron Daly, along with Vivian, just returned from Salzburg, where they played chamber music in master classes and performances at the Mozarteum. So they're really doing marvelous things.
Thank you. It was wonderful meeting some of our new friends out in the lobby, and I wish to continue our conversation again. Um, some of you asked me about our next concert. If you look in the program book, which was done for us by uh, Ron Crane of Crane Associates, we're very pleased that he does this for us, and um, all of our other publication materials too. Um, it does give the entire season, and we have a third program that comes up. Those tickets are available at the Civic Arts Plaza. Um, or you can go on our website and purchase the uh, passes for the church on Friday night. We'll have John Rashino come out and talk a little bit about the program pieces that you'll hear on the second half. Thank you. Good afternoon. We are going to uh, present to you some uh, beautiful romantic works this half and sort of advanced looking classical compositions. We are gonna do pieces by Brook and Sansons, who actually lived almost the same years from the basically mid to late 1830s to the 1920s. Both composers had long lives and left us with a wealth of repertoire. Uh, the violin concerto that you'll hear by Brook is probably his most famous work, and you'll hear the last movement, sort of a, uh, almost a, a dance-like movement in style, very memorable melody, uh, which is um, significant in the Romantic period, lush harmonies, big orchestration, a really beautiful piece um, one of his three violin concertos. Sansons is probably most famous for his Carnival of the Animals, uh, also has written a number of piano concertos and symphonies. His organ symphony is quite well known. Um, these pieces are different in that, and keeping in mind that these composers lived the same time, uh, Brooks is a little more strict uh, in nature, almost classical in form and structure, um, with uh, frequent repetition of the uh, opening theme happening throughout the movement. The uh, Sansons is a little a bit different. It, it starts with basically an improvisational section for the pianist before it ever gets to its main theme. It is a gorgeous piece. It's actually followed by a couple of movements that are very light and rhythmic in nature and are very different than the first movement that you'll hear today. We will do uh, a Haydn concerto, his last piano concerto, final movement of that, and we will do the first movement of Beethoven's third concerto. Just to draw a little parallel between Beethoven and Haydn, uh, they actually met around 1790 is when Beethoven actually started studying with Haydn a bit. Haydn wrote the concerto you'll hear today in 1780. So 10 years later, he met Beethoven. Then 10 years after that, in about 1800, at a time when Beethoven was beginning to lose his hearing, Beethoven wrote the third piano concerto. Um, one interesting fact about the third concerto is that Beethoven debuted the piece and performed it uh, the same evening that Symphony No. 2 was premiered. And Beethoven needed a page turner because he had just completed the concerto. And so he had his page turner and about uh, three quarters of the way through the piece in the third movement, the page turner 
continued to turn pages even though there was no music written on any of the pages. So Beethoven had quickly prepared parts uh, for memory, never got the piano part written down, and so Page Turner just kept turning blank pages until the, the piece ended. I thought that was interesting, a note about that. It really is a, a gorgeous work, very expansive, shows what Beethoven is most famous for, uh, expanding musical form, developing motives, um, having wonderful development sections, and uh, it's just a very uh, beautiful piece. So I hope you enjoy the second half, and we hope to see you back here in July for our other concerts. Thank you.
Thank you.